Okay, so we're about to start pre-shading. Obviously we've got some flat black loaded up in the airbrush. We're gonna do the prop at the same time. Um, we've got both canopies here. This is the true one, the one that's masked up and been sprayed green, which will be showing in the rear position. This one isn't masked, it's just sat there, and we can just you know go straight over the top of that because it's gonna be not used, but we're using it for masking. So usual thing, we're just gonna do the canopy area first. This will just give it a good amount of depth and it will stop it um, getting that sort of light green see-through transparency that you can get. Um, obviously when you're using normal colours, the black will just give it a, a good thickness. So we're just doing the area like that. And what we'll do, we'll come back and we'll give it a good coat of paint over there so it doesn't look like it's sort of pre-shading. So that's done just like that and then obviously we just do the canopy. Here we go, so that's that done. And now we can just carry on with the pre-shading. I'll start on the top, so obviously we're up there. It doesn't have to be too neat because this is gonna be quite a, a heavy uh, amount of weathering and fading, so the pre-shading needs to be quite strong. Probably a little bit high air pressure here to do with turning it down just a tad, which I will. That's better. just like that and then we just work our way around all these major panels so I'm not worried about this being too neat because it's going to have a lot of paint over the top of this so the free shade needs to be strong so I wouldn't worry too much about it spitting and your various other problems you might get and so every now and again just give the needle a bit of a rub off and a blow through clean back and off you go again That's one wing done like that. We're going to do the rest of the entire of the model. There we go, that's the pre-shading all done. Now the observant amongst you will realize I haven't actually primed it. Um, there's no particular reason for that. It's just that one of those things is looking good. Everything's okay. I'm happy with seam lines, things like that. So I'm not going to worry about priming it. I'm going to prime and paint all in one just to save a little bit of time. Because to be honest, I am running a little bit behind on this one now. Um, so just to speed things up, um, it won't affect anything because I'm pretty confident with all the joints because we painted them up beforehand and things like that. So I know it's all going to be okay. Sprayed the prop as well, that's just our jet black and obviously as you saw we've done the, the canopy. So what we'll do, we're going to leave that now for just a half an hour um, just to totally dry off and then we can come back and get our first coat of paint on. Okay, so now it's time to get some paint on I'm going to do the underside. Now, um, depending on obviously what you're doing, um, you're going to be using different colours on this. Um, for these, I'm going to use, uh, for the underside here, we're going to do it in the neutral grey because we're going to do it in the Tigers um, scheme with the shark mouth on the front. Um, so I'm using XF53, which is their neutral grey because we need neutral grey for the bottom. There again, it, it doesn't have to be an exact science, the colour, because we're going to lighten it and fade it and weather it. Um, just like real aircraft, you get two aircraft, stick them next to each other and, you know, obviously different ages, different weathering, one sat in the sun, various, you know, there's so many different variables. So don't worry about a particular shade. As long as it's the right colour, by the time you've weathered and played with it, then it will make quite a bit of a difference to obviously how it's going to be. And one wing might be slightly different colour to the other wing and various bits and pieces. Okay. Standard setup, it's Evo 2-in-1 here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make this quite a wet mix, and by wet I mean quite heavily thin. So in there we've got about one mil of thinners. Uh, we're just gonna pour in some paint, like so. And I seem to have misplaced my lovely stirring stick somewhere, so we'll have to 
use a cocktail stick. Um, obviously this is Tamiya paints which do spray very very well. If you're new to airbrushing I would advise doing it with these. Standard thing, just knock it up 50-50, 50% thinners to 50% paint is always a good place to start and keep your air pressure with acrylics a little bit higher than you would with enamels. So just keep your air pressure up around the sort of, you know, sort of above 15. Don't go lower than 15. I would really advise say 20, 25 psi is a nice working air pressure to start with. And don't get too close to your model, start further away and work your way in. Okay, so that's got a, a good mix there. So let's take that dribble off the side. A bit too much if I'm honest in here. Okay. Check your flow, let it come through because obviously the thinners will be in the chamber first. You don't want to hit your plane with thinners. Now we haven't primed this. This is to demonstrate how you don't need to prime. But what you do need, you just can't go flat in there like we've done with our normal um, spraying and sort of, you know, coating on your paint. Do it quite dusty over the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the compressor on. All right, so what we're going to do, we'll start on this lower wing down here, closest to you. And we're just making a nice dusty pass right the way up that wing and then back down. As you can hear, it's not a brilliant flow, that's it. There was something clogging because you couldn't hear it coming out nice and even. So there we go, we're going over the top again, just like that. And as you see, you get that misty um, effect going over the black. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do that everywhere and just mist on a coat to start with. Okay, so there's our misting coat, literally just on. Just cut to air, just press down for air and dry it all off everywhere. Okay, then we'll start down the back here at this tails and all we're going to do is just build it up nice and light like that. And don't forget, we don't want to totally cover the pre-shading. As soon as the pre-shading goes, as you can see on that tail, as soon as it disappears, stop. I, and then cut to air and dry off and it'll allow that pre-shading to sort of come back in. So we're just going to work our way over the entire model now We're just building up Oops, a to that. Okay. and then if it does look a little bit as if it's covering too much and you're using your your pre-shading perhaps a little bit like this what you can actually do is just add a little bit more thinners as you see, I'm getting quite happy with how this is looking. But what we're going to do, just for to show you here, we're going to add a little bit more thinners into there. Let's say a little bit, it's probably quite a lot. Okay, good old mix. So this is a very wet mix now. So really, you're in the percentages. It's only about 25% um, paint to 75% thinners. So obviously we need to get rid of all that thicker stuff out of here first. And you'll probably hear a bit change. And obviously it's covering power will dwindle. Right, okay. Here we go again. As you can see, that wing, uh, the lower wing there, it's come through quite a bit again. So we do nice misting it over the top. Side of the cow. And the wing. to see how far up it goes and various bits and pieces. And there we go. 
So we can leave that to one side, or if you wanted to, you can give it a bit of a blow with a hairdryer, which is what I'm going to do right now. Just, just to show you, one second. <clears throat> and there we go. You can see there, it's in. So what we're gonna do now is our usual thing. We're gonna grab some white. So we've got a bit of flat white here. Let me just put the lid on that a second. Okay, see we've got about this much, you can see it in there, uh, about this much paint in here, which is probably about um, one mil, uh, if you're lucky. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna add Uh, a few drops to that to lighten it up. Loads of thinners. So, we'll put a bit of thinners in there. Okay, then we're going to give that a very good mix to make up a far lighter coat. So, there we go. Make sure that gets a very, very good mix because the white, otherwise, you end up with little white speckles and things like that. So, there we go. Okay, right, press it back on, air pressure up nice and high. Mm. As you can see there, and yeah, it's a totally different colour, very lighter than what we had just sprayed on. So just clean up the little tab there. Okay, then what we'll do, because we're making a bit of a mess here, just take a couple of nice clean bits on the top there. Okay, obviously a bit strange. I'll try and do it this way. Set that up. But what we're going to do now, usual thing, we're just going to pick out some of those centers and we're just going to mopalize it if you like just a little bit. What we need to do, if we're honest, just need to tip a little bit out of here. And we just need to thin this even more because it's a little bit thick. You'll notice if you've been using the Valeros, um, Tamiya is very, very thick compared to it, which is great for starting out because it's got great coverage and things like that. But when you get going with it a bit, you need nice runny paint because it blends a lot better than obviously a thick paint does. Okay. Let's get that coming through. There we go, it's quite nice. Okay. That's better. So what we're gonna do, same as we do all these other types of things, we're not painting, we're keeping it random. We're just doing the middles of panels and bits and pieces. Don't go near edges, anything else like that. We're just trying to pick out centers. I'm generally just trying to give it that look of fading paint because it will make the, the centers with the pre-shading actually stand out a lot better. And any weathering you do that comes around, it just exaggerates it all. It makes it all look very nice. It's just like that. And I'm just going to do it in between these veins. Every now and again, clean off your needle. Just give it a, a little wipe or a cotton wool bud or whichever you're going to do. Usual thing, final dust over absolutely everywhere, just to lighten it all, just like that. 
anywhere where you think it would get extra work or extra thing you can say use your imagination so to speak but here we go see we're looking rather like this and just don't be afraid to get stuck in there and to have a good go at it because you if your paint is thin like obviously this is you can't change it drastically if it is a thick paint obviously you put it on you're going to get a white mark straight in there because obviously you can see the color that we've got in the color cup here versus the plain wing if it was a thick paint you would end up with white literally lumps but because it's a heavily thin it's going to blend in a lot better but there we go so now we're looking like that and as you say you with the with the lightening of the panels just like this and then obviously with the the pre-shading it looks very dark and dirty already even before we've done any type of weathering whatsoever so what we're going to do is just put a little bit down the sides here you know people often ask can you go over the top with this if your paint's thin no you can't it's really really hard to over to do, overdo it really so just don't worry about it have fun with it and get stuck in so there we go that's that done Okay, now it's the exciting time we can get the paint on. As you can see, the underside is dried and done and looking quite nice and weathered, just with a little bit of post-shading and a bit of um, pre-shading obviously working well there. Okay, colour time. Um, the Warhawk, this particular one, was painted the standard RAF Second World War colours of the dark earth and dark green. Um, but if you was just to put it on it wouldn't look right so what we're going to do is actually darken it down a little bit and we're going to put just a drop of black into both when we put it on and then we're going to lighten it up and various bits and pieces to try and give it that sort of worn look you know this aircraft was in the far east very hot very rainy conditions as well so that really speeds up the weathering process which is something you know hopefully we can really bring to life on this particular one um things of interest got the nose it's just blue tacked together a little you know the actual um, gummy stuff just to hold it there so we can spray it because obviously it's going to be the um, earth color and then same with the canopy it's still in its black state just like this we've got the other one on we'll spray this as well um, it's going to be dark green so it's going to be all over color and when it's slid back it won't make too much difference um, choices of color obviously um, you can use the guns range um, Tamiya um, using their dark earth and dark green as well isn't that far out although I found it a little bit brown um, sounds funny but it's more of a brown than an earthy color my favorite choice if for color wise is to use the um, Hanant's extra acrylics now they're not the easiest to work with and spray with especially in warm conditions today you know it's quite a cool day so we, we should be okay with it but we're going to keep it quite thin so obviously we don't lose this pre-shading um, normally on this type of scale i would normally do it all freehand straightforward very easy very straight you know okay to do with probably my finer airbrush with a nice sort of one point um uh, sorry a naught point uh, five needles set in there and it, you know basically go through it all and everything else like that um, but what we're going to do to show you really uh, the difference is we're going to be using the blue tack worm system so i can show you how to do very nice faded you know it's not a sharp line it's a faded line um, but an easy and straightforward way to do it especially if you're new to airbrushing so I do. So what I'm going to do is get the compressor all up, sorted up and ready. I'm going to get some paint uh, made up and we can get started. Okay, so there's various ways of doing this. This one here, I'm literally just spraying, which I won't bore you with, that's why I haven't gone through the motions. But basically, just spray the entire wing green. Uh, sorry, green, brown, sorry. Just like that. Okay, and then we just lightly feather in that leading edge just like that so we've got one brown wing and what we do on this wing um, as a bit of a demonstration we'll do it sort of the normal way so we do you pick out your light area and just freehand just literally going to spray it in freehand so it goes in like there and then we'll work out that it's going to be here and it's going to go cut around here Just colour in your area which you've sprayed in like so. And 
and when you're looking too wet just literally cut to air and dry up and don't forget every now and again just give your needle a bit of a clean or a wipe down cotton bud or a bit of thinners or something on a brush whichever way you do it okay so we just do that like so and we've got another one that happens in here so that's just up by this and all you want to do is go wider and further than what the colour is because you need it to overlap totally because you don't want to have any grey bits of paint left between the two okay if I turn you round and then so you've got this type of effect so obviously your brown is all showing where it's needed um, and make sure you just overlap as I was saying and you can just go around just you know lightly blow in the leading edges so then when we come round we'll mask off this brown area and then just spray in as and how is required all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the rest of the brown work all done and then we can get together for the green okay so there we go that's the he says trying to grab somewhere not wet there's the the back end done um, just like that all sorted and that's the brown so we've done this one here to show you and on this one as you can see it's more patchy okay so we're going to come next in with the green um, as I say you could do it freehand and if you're doing um, a 132 and they're old and warm it gives a great appearance because what tends to happen is because you will never get it as sharp perhaps with your normal standard airbrush you know perhaps with something like this as a 0.15 you know you can get in there to very very tight very very sharp um, panel lines and if you've seen some of my other work where I do it freehand you can do it but obviously for your average you know person who's doing it who doesn't want to spend mega bucks on an expensive airbrush and things like that then you do have other options so what we're going to do we're going to do it the worm way as I call it so this is literally just your um, white tack um, thing so literally if I just show you here I'm going to open up this pack which is a nice new one okay it comes like this comes under lots of different names around the world we'll stick it in wikipedia to find out what yours is called okay and just grab yourself a nice lump like so okay and then we're going to warm it up the warmer this stuff is the better it works two things it does one is it gets a little bit more tacky and tends to grip better um, it's not terribly grippy don't worry about it nicking all your your paint and things like that because it won't do that it won't pull your paint off but you do need it to be quite soft and pliable so the warmer it gets the more pliable and the more bendy and the more sticky it all goes so what we do we show you on this wing here so here it is so all you do if you grab your a lump okay make it into a thinnish type sausage have your instructions to hand like this so you can see exactly where you're going to put it and then keep it get it nice and warm and roll it to a thickness of about this which I suppose is about sort of half a centimeter now there's a good reason why it's that width and not thinner is as you'll see in a moment we're going to actually what we call pushing it over which will hopefully give you a nice soft edge so there we go all right looking at your instructions you can roughly work out where it's going to go make sure you always start it over and fold it down on the other side all right okay we're just going to come along push in all right and then we're just going to put it over various areas and just push down lightly on the top Okay, so we just need it to crimp back up on itself. And this is the thing, just lift it, push it, pull it, however you need it to go. And you can work it out just like that. And then on your last bit, just flip it over. So you'd have something like that. And that's the way it works. And basically you're gonna work all the way around the model now you could if i just take it off you can see on here it if you catch it in the light it does leave a little mark but those marks actually come off if you get a clean you see it's clean got a bit around here somewhere and just moisten it and give it a rub 
if you can see there, but those marks all come off. So don't worry. There we go. You can see there, they've all gone. Catch them in the light. Perhaps you can just see them roughly in the light still, but that's probably where it's moisture still. But there's no actual greasy mark left on, and this hasn't been top coated with Future or anything else like that. So if we get this one back in position, okay. So we're just going to hook him over. Where were we? Uh, up to that barrel line. Okay. And then we're just coming round. Okay. Around the areas like that. Okay, up and in. Now, if you're not totally confident with your spraying, you can mask up and using tissue paper, you know, like this is great because you can just come along and push it on just like that. Okay, grab yourself another bit. All right, just push it in just like that, okay? Now, if I do it quickly with you, okay, let's have a good mix. Very old, haven't used as well. Same thing, about 50-50. I'm not gonna go overboard on this one. Right, I'm not gonna darken this green because it's quite a dark green anyway. I'll just grab the colour cup, mixy mixy, just like so. Secret with all acrylic paints, it's got to have a good mix, otherwise you're going to get lumps, you know, really any airbrushing, but I think acrylics tend to be a little bit more um, to start off with anyway, until you get used to them. You know, once you're used to them, they're fine, but it does take a bit of getting used to. Okay, so that's that. Fair enough. Doing this all a little bit quick, because obviously I'm trying to show you here. Green paint, very nice, okay. And then we're just gonna come along from the top here. And we're just spraying 90 degrees straight down, cutting to air to dry off a bit. Okay, back to paint. Don't flood the area, it's gotta be dry. As soon as it looks wet, Cut to air and dry off. Okay, so this is, as I say, it's more of a demonstration than it is making this look fantastic. But there we go, there's that. Okay, so then you remove your towel, like so. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I've just got a hairdryer just out of shot. Giving that a blow, honestly, it's the same model, and there we go. There's your line. So, if I zoom you in here, you can see a bit better. But there we go, you get a nice faded edge, and the reason for that is if you can see it here, um, because we flattened it, it's given it a bit of a roll. So, when you spray, it goes down. So, you haven't got a, a rock hard edge if you'd use tape or if you'd used a thin worm, but because we used quite a fat one and pushed it, it made a nice curve so that way the paint all goes around it like that. And that's it. And that's basically the way we're gonna do it. We're gonna do the entire model just like that. And if you wanted to, you could do it in stages as we've just done there and just do it bit by bit as you go around. Or as I say, you can then just do the entire thing with worms everywhere, mask it all up and spray it all in one or just do it in bits. But you have got that little mark on there. A lot of that is, is this is because it's brand new and hasn't been used yet. Oh yeah. We use the word yet because we use quite a bit. Now this is basically dry to touch, just wetting it, okay, and then just give it a bit of a rub and it'll just take off any little marks of that blue tack on there, just like that. And we've taken hardly anything off and it leaves it just like there. So as you can see, it brings it very nicely. And it's a great way of doing a nice smooth camo anywhere you want to go. As I said, you could do it freehand, but in some ways it's quite nice to do it like that because you, you've got it all laid out. You lay it all out first before you actually start getting in there and going around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the rest of it, 
basically just the same way as that. And then we're going to come back and we we'll do some lightening of the panels and things like that, which we'll use this again because obviously we're going to be using light green paint and light brown paint and we don't want it, you know, going over each side. So let me get this all finished.